Greetings, friends. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thanks for your time, your energy, and your interest. I've got a topic I think you're going to find very helpful. Will fasting help me lose weight? There's a lot I can say about this topic that I think would be very helpful, so let's just dive right in. It's no secret that we live in a world where people will sincerely try whatever they can in the hopes of downsizing their body. And with that said, there's a constant supply, you know this, of new diets, new theories, new gizmos, the latest books from the next big expert telling us how to lose weight. I want to provide for you some honest insights as to the usefulness of fasting when it comes to weight loss. My experience here is fairly substantial as earlier on in my career, I led fasting retreats over the course of about a dozen years. I worked with many hundreds of people and had the benefit of actually observing a wide variety of age groups, nationalities, body types, people with various health conditions and weight challenges and more. I saw amazing successes with fasting and I also saw a lot of disappointed people. With fasting, all outcomes are possible because each one of us is biologically unique. So with that said, allow me to answer very directly the question that I posed, will fasting help me lose weight? The answer is this, yes, it can help you lose weight and no, it might not. And for many people, fasting to lose weight has some hidden problems and downsides that are important to know about. So here's the thing. The gold standard of weight loss that's existed since the late 1950s is that we should eat less and exercise more. Now, this long-standing approach is based on the outdated scientific assumption that the human body is a 100% pure input-output calorie-burning machine. Important news alert, this simply is not true. Outdated belief. If the calories in, calories out model truly worked, it would have done so a long time ago, and we would not be in this conversation right now. I'm going to go into the science of this in another conversation. But for now, what I've observed over the years is that there is a subset of people who, when they reduce their caloric intake via dieting or fasting, they will indeed lose weight. But guess what? The human body has its natural and necessary caloric needs, its energy needs, its nutritional needs, so we cannot sustain ourselves for very long on a deficiency in calories and nutrition. We can fast or we can go on a low-calorie diet, but eventually we need to eat again and we're gonna naturally hunger for food. So what many people experience is that they can indeed fast, indeed lose weight, but they gain it right back, and nobody enjoys that. It becomes a waste of time and emotional energy, and it leaves a lot of people feeling shortchanged. So yes, fasting can help us lose weight, but that does not mean it can grant people sustained and lasting weight loss. The good news is, there's a subset of people who when they fast, several good things happen. First, if people truly have weight to lose, fasting can help reset the body. It's not guaranteed, but it works for a certain percentage of people. One action fasting can have is it can provide the kind of detoxification where our metabolism can shift to a more normal and healthy state. Research has shown that liver detoxification can lead to weight loss. For some people, the thyroid gland can rebalance after a fasting period, which can lead to a shift towards our natural weight. For other people, the detoxification of heavy metals from the body can catalyze weight loss. So there's a lot of reasons. Additionally, when fasting, we're generally eliminating potential food allergens from the diet, such as the common ones, gluten, dairy, and soy. And those are some of the most common food allergens that smart clinicians will notice can cause weight loss resistance. So eliminating these during a fast can stimulate weight loss and drive us towards our natural weight. Fasting also has us eliminating substances like sugar and caffeine. Now, I'm not saying these are terribly bad substances, but what I'm saying is sugar can adversely impact blood sugar and insulin regulation and it can lead to weight gain. Excess caffeine can cause an unnatural rise in both cortisol and insulin for many people, also resulting in weight gain. And various xenoestrogens, these are substances that mimic the action of estrogen in the body and can stimulate weight gain. So the result of removing these substances from the diet is once again a return to our natural God-given metabolism. On the flip side, and you won't hear too much about this, 
a large number of people will report that they can go on a medically supervised fast at one of the typical clinics or hospital worldwide that do such things, and they can eat very little calories, if any, over the course of a week or more, and they can actually gain a few pounds for their money and their efforts. By the way, this is more common than most people would imagine. The reason for this is the starvation response. Some bodies, many bodies, will vigorously resist the absence of food. The brain believes we're on a desert island and that we're in famine conditions, and it wisely does its job by signaling the body to store weight, store fat, and not build muscle. This yields the exact opposite of weight loss that so many people want. And this is simply an evolutionary adaptation designed to help us survive in lean times. Low calorie diets for many people have the exact same effects as starvation. So what this points to is that the stress response can lead to both weight loss, resistance, and weight gain. The scientific literature is abundantly clear about the impact that stress itself and the chemistry associated with it can have on weight. It shoots up. This is important because many people who fast, check this out, are in a stress response. They're living in fear and anxiety about their weight. We might be in judgment of our body, attacking it with our silent words and thoughts, all of which create stress chemistry, specifically the hypersecretion over time of cortisol and insulin, which can both signal the body to store fat, store weight, not build muscle. So our attitude while fasting can impact our ability to lose weight. Our inner emotional landscape can actually drive our physiology depending on whether or not we're in the physiologic stress response, sympathetic nervous system dominance, or the physiologic relaxation response, parasympathetic nervous system dominance. Can you see how huge our inner world is when it comes to the nutritional tool called fasting? If you're gonna fast, ask yourself, Am I being driven by self-hate, by fear of body fat, by self-judgment, by the stress of not weighing what I think I should weigh? Or am I being inspired to fast because I wish to be healthy, to better myself, to improve myself, to deepen my connection to myself? By the way, the earliest recorded mentions of fasting go back to biblical times. Additionally, native cultures across the globe have practiced fasting for eons of time. But please note, the prophets of old didn't go into the wilderness and fast so they could look good in a bikini. They fasted to cleanse their soul and to connect with a higher power. Likewise, Native Americans don't fast so they can have tighter abs and buns of steel. They fast in nature so they can have a spiritual vision, connect to their higher purpose, move beyond their limitations. So fasting can be a potent and powerful state. It's not just about shedding pounds. It's not just about letting go of chemical toxins. It's about cleaning out the mind. It's about detoxifying ourselves of harmful thoughts and outdated beliefs about who we are. It's about releasing toxic emotions, toxic relationships, toxic media, toxic habits, and more. So if you choose to fast, put your heart and your mind and your soul in the right place. Don't have the mere shallow goal of exterminating a bunch of body fat. Don't use fasting to hate away extra pounds. Rather, ask yourself, what do I truly need to let go of? How can I clean out my mental and emotional house? What is it that I'm carrying that's old and outdated? What unwanted habits need to exit my life? Are there aspects of my character, my behaviors, the way I treat people that need to be cleansed and renewed? How is life wanting me to be a better person? And who do I want to be as a person as the result of going on the powerful journey of cleansing body and mind? In short, fasting is a time for self-reflection. It requires some spaciousness, some simplicity, some silence. It's asking us to tap into something deeper, something higher. I think when we approach fasting in this way, our success is far more assured whether we lose weight or not. I hope you found this helpful, my friends. And as always, I look forward to more. Take care. Hey, friends. We're so happy that you've joined us for another episode of The Psychology of Eating with Mark David. Are you loving these episodes? Then simply subscribe and you'll never miss an episode again. 
We'd also love it if you'd leave us a comment below so we can hear more about your own journey with food and body. And if you're curious about what we offer at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, including our internationally acclaimed coach certification training that's rooted in dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition, please head on over to our website, psychologyofeating.com. Until next time, take care. And remember, having the body you want starts with loving the body you have. Thank you.